His real name is Cleman Johnson, but he's known as Big Evil. Big Evil. Big Evil. What did you do to earn it? Can't say. <laughs> Statute of time limitations haven't run out on that yet. In the 80s and 90s, Johnson was a notorious leader of the 89 Family Bloods Gang. Police have linked him to 20 murders and called him the most cold-blooded killer in the city. Cleman Johnson is one of the wildest gangsters to ever come out of Los Angeles. Johnson, better known by his nickname, Big Evil, was described by police as the most cold-blooded killer LA has ever seen. In a city with over 100,000 active gang members, ask yourself, what would a person have to do in order to earn that title? It's because Johnson was the definition of a savage. Although he officially admitted to at least 12 murders, police said the actual number was well over 20. Rival gang members, witnesses, even LAPD detectives, would find themselves on Johnson's hit list. But, if he couldn't get to you personally, he had a small army of shooters, willing to do whatever he said. As a shot caller in the 89 family Swan Bloods, Johnson would lead his gang to become one of LA's most notorious. The numbers themselves are unbelievable. When Johnson was active, the murder rate in family Swan territory was nine times higher than across the rest of LA. This, at the same time that crack was sending LA's own murder rate skyrocketing. Just to put this into perspective, if LA had that same murder rate, the city would have seen over 22,000 murders per year. Needless to say, Family Swan were extremely active. And Johnson was on the front lines. Family Swan's small territory was surrounded on all four sides by rival crip sets. Johnson knew this and said, we know we're outnumbered and outgunned. What that means is that we're gonna have to be twice as savage. It was what Johnson did during this time, in order to keep his hood alive, that earned him the infamous nickname, Big Evil. So, let's get straight into the story of Cleman Big Evil Johnson, a certified savage. Cleman Johnson was born in Los Angeles, California, on October 15, 1967, the middle child of five boys. Johnson's childhood was much different than that of your average gang members. He grew up in a loving two-parent household, where he and his four brothers never wanted for anything. The family lived in a three-bedroom home, and the Johnson parents would do things, like take the boys camping, or spoil them with go-karts for Christmas. However, the Johnson parents also made sure not to spoil their boys, and wouldn't hesitate to discipline them for misbehaving. That's all to say, that Johnson actually came from a decent home. He had the type of childhood, that many kids in LA could only ever dream of. However, despite how hard they tried, his parents couldn't shield their boys from the ugly reality that waited for them outside of their front door. It was LA in the 1970s, and crack gangs and guns were about to take over the city of angels. But one incident would change Johnson's life forever. When he was 8 years old, he was sitting on a fire hydrant at 84th and Town. That's when a car pulled up, a bunch of teenagers hopped out and began opening fire. Johnson wasn't injured, but he would witness his friend, Daryl, get showered in a hail of gunfire. They had murdered Daryl right in front of his eyes. And, less than a year later, when Johnson was only nine, he witnessed a second murder right in front of his eyes. Like any other young boy, this rattled him. But, time would pass by, and Johnson eventually started attending Drew Middle School, in Watts. There, he would encounter Crips on a daily basis. At that time, in the 1970s, the Crips were brand new on the LA gang scene. But the early Crips were notorious for bullying and terrorizing their way around LA. With the early Crips, it was either get down, or lay down. And nobody could really do anything about it. That was, until a group of students of Centennial High, said enough was enough, and formed the Bloods, as a way of fighting back against Crip aggression. But, how does this all relate to Clayman Johnson? Well, when he was a student at Drew Middle School, he also witnessed an older member of the Kitchen Crips bullying other students. But, like the Bloods at Centennial, Johnson chose to fight back. He then attacked the older Crip member, smashing his face into a basketball pole, until the Crips' blood was dripping all over the basketball court. The attack instantly gained Johnson the respect of the other boys. Johnson would eventually go on to develop a reputation as someone good with his hands. In the 1960s and early 70s, it was standard practice to handle your problems with your fists. If things really got heated, the most you could expect was probably a knife, or a baseball bat. Guns were only used as a last resort, where a person violated so badly, that people could understand why someone would want to shoot him. But that would all change in the 1980s, when crack cocaine first made its way to LA. Crack changed everything. It was like the HUD's version of a gold rush, people were making money hand over fist. 
But, with that money also came competition. Everyone was competing for a piece of the pie. Others wanted the entire pie for themselves. That competition then sparked an arms race, as LA gang members started equipping themselves with high-powered weapons, ditching their old rusty revolvers and shotguns. At this time, Johnson would also join the 89 Neighborhood Family Bloods. Neighborhood Family territory is located near 89th and Central. Neighborhood Family would eventually join the nearby Mad Swan Bloods, to form Neighborhood Family Swan Bloods. These two gangs had merged out of necessity. Family Swan's territory is surrounded on all sides by rival Crip sets, including the East Coast Crips, Avalon Garden Crips, and the Kitchen Crips. Family Swan was totally surrounded, outnumbered, and outgunned. But this didn't bother Johnson. Describing his dedication to his hood, Johnson would later say, quote, I was the epitome of a gang member. I was real. A lot of people be putting on a front that they bad. Acting tough. I wasn't acting at all, I was just being me. People failed to realize, it was like a religion. It's not for the fun of it. Some people worshipped Allah, or Jesus. I worship bloods. End quote. Gang banging was a religion to Johnson. To keep his hood alive, he then formed an elite sub-unit within Family Swan, called the 88 Monsters. The monsters would make up for the fact that they were both outnumbered and outgunned by being ruthlessly violent and highly organized. One Family Swan member would even describe Johnson's propensity for violence, saying, quote, When his anger goes off, it's something to check out, blood. It was scary. He'd be getting like a hurricane, and you can't stop him when he want to jack up someone. You know that he ain't just talking, like so many other brothers. If he said it, I would say to myself, someone gonna die tonight. End quote. As a leader, Johnson translated that high propensity for violence throughout the ranks of the gang. For example, LAPD said that Family Swan's trademark was their instant payback. If someone came through their hood, Family Swan would retaliate instantly. Police realized this, and so any time a call would come in for a shooting in Family Swan territory, they would rush over to their enemy's hood, hoping to stop the immediate retaliation. But, the LAPD said that Family Swan's get back was so quick, that sometimes they had already managed to get it back in blood, before the police had managed to show up. But Johnson wasn't only extremely violent, he was also cold and calculating. One story stands out, it's a story that LAPD officers would talk about for years. So, one day, Johnson decided to slide through the hood of the rival Avalon Gardens Crips. But this wasn't going to be a quick drive-by, nothing sloppy. Johnson instead organized a coordinated attack, acting like a general on the battlefield. First, he had two of his guys commit shootings in a different part of town, in order to draw the police away from the Avalon Gardens area. Second, he then positioned shooters on the flanks of Avalon Gardens. Third, Johnson arranged for several getaway drivers to also be parked outside Avalon Gardens, for a clean getaway. With everything in place, and the police all the way across town, Johnson then led 10 other guys into the Avalon Gardens housing complex. Once inside, the group unloaded a total of 200 shots, somehow managing only to kill one person. They then ran to the waiting getaway vehicles, and drove off. It was this reputation for extreme calculated violence that earned Johnson the nickname, Big Evil, and made him public enemy number one, in the eyes of the LAPD. Johnson would be linked to numerous shootings and murders during this time. Police would then form a special 89 family task force. The task force was made up of not only detectives from the LAPD, but also FBI agents. It was formed for the single purpose of bringing down Johnson. The major issue police faced was that, any time they'd book Johnson for a murder, he would beat the case, either because a witness was too scared to testify, or Johnson would have been killed. He beat so many murder cases in this way, that many considered him untouchable. But his luck would change, after he was arrested in connection to a double murder, that happened in August of 1991. On August 5th of that year, Ronald Ray Loggins and Peyton Barrett were parked at a car wash on 88th and Central, in the heart of Family Swan territory. It was a warm afternoon, and Johnson had spotted the pair, as he was sitting on the porch of his parents' home, 100 feet from the car wash. Loggins was described as an innocent civilian. However, some sources say Barrett was a civilian, while others say he was a member of the rival Kitchen Crips. Either way, Johnson wanted both men dead for the simple fact that they were in the wrong hood. He then gave an Uzi submachine gun to a young family swan member, named Michael Fat Rat Allen, and ordered him to execute Loggins and Barrett, in order to prove himself. Allen gunned both men down, killing them. However, Johnson and Allen would later be arrested, after three incarcerated gang members, including a family swan member, began cooperating against the pair. 
Johnson and Allen would then be convicted of capital murder and sentenced to death. Upon hearing of her son's conviction, Johnson's mother would say, quote, I feel I gave him my all. I just don't know what happened. Sometimes I feel I am to blame, but I did all a mother could do. I don't know why it turned out like this. End quote. But Johnson had a much different reaction. He sat emotionless in the courtroom as the verdict was read out. He would later say that he had actually celebrated getting the death penalty by drinking homemade brew in jail. According to Johnson, jail had saved his life. Even if he was going to be executed in 10 years, Johnson believed it would extend his life longer than if he had remained on the streets, where he believed his time had already run out. But Johnson also didn't care about dying. He would later say, quote, I'm not really fond of life. It seems like I'm already dead. I ain't never been one that depends on hope. End quote. But, Johnson's story would continue even while on death row. First, in 2007, his younger brother, Timothy, would be gunned down while returning home from a party. Timothy, better known as Sinister, was a well-known local rapper, and had even managed to catch the attention of Shug Knight, before getting signed to Interscope Records. Johnson would also lose his son, Clemen Johnson Jr., while in jail, after he was shot and killed in Koreatown, in 2021. In February 2022, his co-accused, Michael Fat Rat Allen, was also found dead in his cell in San Quentin. Johnson is currently awaiting trial for five capital murder charges and gang enhancements. His original murder convictions had been overturned in 2011, but police would end up slapping him with even more murders, including a female witnesses he allegedly killed in order to prevent from testifying against him. Despite growing up in a stable and loving home, Clemen Johnson would end up becoming one of the most violent gang members in California history. And, despite being boxed in on all sides by much larger enemies, Johnson and Family Swan were able to keep their hood alive through unparalleled savagery. As a result, Big Evil's name rings bells across the city of Los Angeles till this very day. And that's why he's a certified savage. Please comment, like, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. More Certified Savages is on the way.